In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head and showing you what goes through my mind in a live weekend league gameplay at Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden players that they could possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies that I post every single day. Every day we post videos that can help you get better on offense and on defense. And so if you wanna get access to all of that content, I wanna encourage you to uh, hit the subscribe button. Now in this video, I'm gonna be running the trips tight in on offense and the nickel 335 wide on defense. If you wanna get the entire, uh, or the exact offense and the exact defense that I'm using, I'm gonna put a link to both of those eBooks down in the description. I believe it's the best combination uh, and the best way to be playing Madden right now. Now, uh, real quick, we're gonna get right off rip here and we're just gonna go down to the trips tight end quick base. What I like to do is come out in short side trips Short side trips will give you better blocking if you know you're gonna run quick base. Now right here, we're in the middle of the field, but we're just gonna run, immediately go to quick base and just kind of test his run defense. Just a just a simple little play to get started. Uh, as you can see, while we're kind of continuing to just set everything up and just kind of get everything rolling. Um, but real quick, what I like to do whenever I'm starting a game is I love to just be able to get that conservative ball carrier, make sure you have that on and then just go to something like that. It's a real easy way to start the game and it really does help. Now, right here, um, my opponent actually, I don't know what the heck, like that's happened to me a couple times um, and it's really, really unfortunate. I don't know why, I don't know what he's running. Um, I don't know if it's gotta be, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know what to think of that. That I don't feel like that's a good defensive play call, but I feel like it's on me a little bit. Um, one of the things you have to be able to do if you're going to be running trips tight in, in my opinion, in, in, in really any offense, but especially trips tight in, um, and right here, just because of the common, like the formation came out in, we're just going to do this and try to try to just get an easy, easy stop. I, I'm, I'm curious to see how this game goes. Um, he's already doing some stuff that I just don't understand. One of the things that you have to do if you're going to be effective in trips tight end for very long is you have to be able to um, understand the read between a hitch and a post combo and right there I just missed the read I didn't do a good job didn't execute and ended up paying me or ended up getting uh, getting boxed by that so right here I'm totally anticipating something like a, a quick a quick slants or something um, just just this often I just don't see people run this a lot um, so I gotta figure out who and where to put everybody on my defense still. I'm still kind of learning, like I, I've, I've changed my abilities up a little bit. So my substitutions uh, actually take a little bit longer than they used to. So that's a that's a thing. It's actually a big deal when you're playing something like a weekend league. Now here he shows me he's in Arizona. Um, gotta expect quick base here. No, no quick base. Quick base from that formation is actually really, really good. So here we're able to just kind of come down, get a stop. So we'll see what he does, if he goes for it or not. I feel like he should just take his three. Um, but I think we've got everything set up defensively. Let me just double check my coaching adjustments here. They are set up. And then let me just check my zone or my audible. So we're good to go. Uh, we should be good for the game now. Um, so at least we held him to three. It's just, I don't know. This has been kind of a, a recent adjustment. A lot of people, I've noticed a lot of people going to where they'll come out like in, in stock cover three buzz out of like three to five wide or something. And then what you'll notice is that they'll, they'll run their cover three to the tight end side. Really interesting when you're thinking about it because it's trips tight end, right? Trips tight end, if you just streak a guy on the right side, you're gonna be open. But um, obviously, you know, it's a really good defense for what I, the concept that I was trying to hit, which was that hitch post concept. I probably had the hitch looking back, but it is what it is. We've got to execute a little bit better. I've got to be able to understand when that yellow is sitting, when you're looking at a hitch, it's really important, especially if you're gonna use hitches a lot. Whenever you're looking at a hitch route, you just have to understand that, like it's so important. One of the things I've also started doing is I'm actually willing to take the ball at like the 15 or the 13 yard line just, be, just to get on a hash. It saves me a play. Um, I don't like to, I don't want to risk fumbles, so I just fall down. Um, really simple, but anyway. 
All right, so let's see if we can play a little bit better on offense this next drive. We're gonna start out with just kind of a bread and butter, um, bread and butter play. This is a play that's really, really good if he's just running kind of stock basic stuff. Um, this is like probably one of the best plays in the game for that. And just checking, taking our check time. He actually did a good job of carrying on that crosser. So you see right here, like cover six Enver. You know, I don't, I don't know what exactly he's gonna be doing. But that's just, you know, that's just something to think about. You know, it, it, you know what, what, what does that mean for us? So, so like right here, I'm just gonna go to a um, like a post wheel concept, really, really good. Um, if he's gonna be in this this kind of coverage, and you should see, we should be able to get this over the top. CD Lamb over the top, nice dot. PA shot wheel. PA shot wheel is such a good play. Um, it's a very versatile uh, concept, very versatile passing play to be able to use. And, and I think he's I think he's literally just running like match on us. So, so that's just something we've got to, you know, kind of watch a little bit. Here we're gonna go to this setup. I really like this. If he is running match, he's a really good beater. Um, Calvin Johnson should get over the top of that purple. Nice little dot in the back corner. And as you can see, we're already back up seven nothing. So good job by the offense to recover. Now we're still down a possession. We still need to get a stop. We still need to come out and play solid defense but we're feeling good on offense that first drive a little shaky made a, made a little bit of a misread he ends up getting a pick it's important to madden important in madden to bounce back it's a long game it's longer it's it's longer and it's shorter than you think um you know it's longer in in, in terms of the fact that every play is an opportunity for you to make a play or for you to make a mistake it, you know you have so many of those opportunities throughout the course of a game little things like making sure i find little things make a big difference so making sure that you do this sky kick is super important we want to get the ball in the hands of their fullback why because their fullback if for anything else if for anything else the reason we want to do this is because number one their fullback is typically not a good uh not as good of a ball carrier and second and more importantly is his speed fullbacks by the very nature of a fullbacks person position and uh cards Typically, are they're not going to be super fast, right? They're not going to be faster than your guys. Um, so that's just something you know, very, very, very little, minor, minor, but really, really important. Right here, nice route combo, and he's going to hit us over the middle uh, with a nice read. Now, if he's going to stay in cluster, um, we're going to shift. So it does look like he's going to stay in cluster. Whenever I face cluster, I face, I don't face it often, but when I do. I love to use turn auto flip off and basically play it like I'm playing gun bunch. So you're gonna see the essentially the same defense here. And there's the base, and that's the that's what I thought he should have ran. The base is the best thing cluster, in my opinion, it's the best thing cluster's got going for it. The base run from cluster is good. Um, it's really good. It pro it honestly is probably a little better than trips tight end just because of where the players are at and everything. So if he's gonna establish base. You know that's something that we've got to think about a little bit but if he's you know if he's just gonna run it once or twice here and there you know we're gonna be okay so anyway I'm gonna go with this style of defense see gotta watch out I gotta get back on that and right there that's that's okay that's what that's kind of what we're looking for um, defensively so you'll see like in this situation you'll, you'll notice that okay um, you know now the wide sides on the other side so i'm going to flip it and now again we're just playing to the flood because with cluster you can flood on both sides that's what makes it so good so if i just play to the flood um it's going to help me a ton so you'll see similar with bunch tied in than that and here i gotta get this curl and good read Gotten a little too much time in the pocket. Another thing you can do against a formation like this is you can just blitz the living daylights out of it if you want to, because they don't have uh, the best pass protection. Right here, you gotta watch out for base. There, that was right to me. That's the number one, honestly, that's like the number one route in cluster though. That, that really is like a, the, the thing about cluster is cluster does have some really good post routes. It really does. Um, so you have to kind of watch, have to kind of watch there. Uh, but anyway, we're able to get the stop and it's just a bad read, right? Just a bad read. I mean, it was open except for the user, right? So anyways, uh, kind of with the way he's been playing, 
I'm gonna go to this setup. This is one of my favorite, like, this setup right here is so good, especially if they're running like a lot of, if they're running like a match coverage, it really doesn't matter, but this is a really good setup. Watch circle. You see there, get a nice little throw on the run, easy rollout opportunity for Rodgers. Um, and we're able just to just to easily complete it. So now, now we're in a situation where we can start kind of looking at kind of head. Um, he does get ball at half. That's something that's really important to, to remind yourself of. So his offense is actually not bad either. That's other thing. So as you're kind of judging what you're going to do situationally, you have to take into account kind of the, the how your how your opponent's been doing. Right? How's he been doing at beating your basic coverages? How's he been doing? Um, do you think he's going to be able to go score seven, or do you think you're always going to be able to hold him to three? Those are questions you want to ask because it's going to inform kind of how you think about these next couple situations. Um, for example, like we're going to go back to doubles and sale here. We're going to go to a little bit different of a version just because he hasn't been sending a lot of pressure. It's been a lot of stock coverages or base coverages here. So we're just looking, and actually he does blitz us, and we're going to throw a book. Man, we just made a bad read. We had the running back standing wide open, too. We're going to probably go back to that same uh, concept. And the reason why is I just think that running back route should be open. If he blitzes again off the edge, this running back route is going to be standing wide open. So we just got to watch here. Even if he's not blitzing, uh, because you can do that right there, that little instant truck. So like right here, this is kind of a decision. Um, you, you're you're in a fourth and situ or fourth and inches uh, situation, so it's really really imperative that we pick it up. Obviously, we're even willing to take a timeout if we need to. We probably will, um, but we're just going to come out in it and at least look at fullback dive quick. We might take a timeout and then come back out and go for it again. It just depends on what defense he brings to the table. Is he bringing? Okay, so he's bringing three three five wide. So we now know, okay, we, we know we kind of have a, a little bit of context for what he could potentially do. We're gonna take a timeout here. If he's gonna sit in 335 wide, 335 wide typically um, is not a great um it's 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 not a great uh defense for that. So you're seeing here, I'm just gonna go through, set my eye tight up. Um, I thought I had this set up already, but anyways, uh power -o, duo and then we need to have stretch uh, and we're actually going to come out in stretch so now we're coming out in stretch if he's if he comes out in goal line we're going to audible to or we're just going to run stretch or we might even run the play action um so you see nope he's going to stay there so then we're going to go here just like this right here and basically what we're doing is you know we're just we're just running fullback dive honestly just fullback dive straight ahead on aggressive Easy first down, easy first down. Keep the chains moving. Now we're in a situation, and again, whether we take three or not, what we wanna make sure is we wanna make sure that he doesn't get the ball back in this quarter because he's gonna get the ball coming right out of halftime. So that, those are little things that you have to think about in your play, um, you know, in your, in your game management. Now, uh, what we're gonna do right here is, I'm trying to think. We're gonna go double hitches, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna leverage this post, and then we're gonna really get this this other hitch, we're gonna really get it out here, like out to the numbers, and we're just gonna sit and make reads. Who's open, who's open, who's open, who's open, who's open? Let it, let the clock go, and we're just gonna throw it away. We're just gonna try to see what he's doing. I love that play because it does have easy reads. I had some things open I could have probably thrown, just didn't wanna like force anything. So now this gives us another opportunity. So because of the way that he's playing, this, this route to Calvin is pretty good read. It's a pretty good read, um, especially to the wide side of the field. So we'll just see if he is giving this up. And it does look like he actually is. We're just going to aggressive catch it, try to jump on him a little bit. Not able to get the route that we wanted. And now that's going to bring up a third down and 10. Um, right here, we're going to go to another setup. I really like this setup a lot. Um, this is a... Um, it, it's a really, really heavy, uh, like horizontal passing uh, setup right here. So you'll see that the running back is going to go on a hitch, the tight ends on a flat route, you know, really trying to pull these zones open. Um, and we're going to try to hit the square receiver. Nice read. And we're kind of back in that same boat. Uh, we're kind of back in that same boat. Less time, 
Um, we're going to take a look at it again. I just don't feel like he can stop us with that style of defense that he's in. If he comes out in goal line, then we're going to audible. Prob Honestly, we're probably going to audible to the PA and try to hit him. But you see here, again, he's going down to that. So we're going to that. We're going to actually do a quick playmaker to the left side here. And really try to do this with, uh, with uh, Henry. Just aggressive catch, good, or aggressive uh, ball carrier. And we're going to take that tight out. Why? Again, we could have probably taken a field goal, but he's just not shown us that he can take. He's not shown us that he has the ability to be able to stop fullback dive. So we can easily just kind of keep working that a little bit um, and now put us in a situation right here like this. Now, again, he's running a lot of cover two, um, like a lot of cover two on us. So we're going to stick with this concept. I just really like this route to Calvin. And I think I can hit this. And I threw it. I, I was trying to play make her circle and then throw it to him quick. Not a great move. Uh, and so we're just going to have to take our three. That's okay. So that's all right. I mean, it is what it is. So we're just going to come out, take our three here, and uh, go into halftime up by seven, which is honestly okay. We've had the ball the majority of the first half. We've been doing fine. Um, we, we, we just haven't been able to hit that corner route like we would have liked. What we can also do down the road is we can just hit him with a tight end streak. And we got a pretty good shot. If he's going to stay in a defense like what he's doing, we can hit that tight end streak right up the seam. We probably should have tried to go to that right there. It's a little bit of a lapse in uh, play calling judgment, but it is what it is. We go into halftime up by seven and he didn't touch the ball. So now, ideally, this is this is the ideal scenario. This drive is the last time he touches the ball. Unless he makes a mistake, this should be the last time that he touches the ball in the entire game. Um, literally, it, like this should be it. Um, defensively, we've gotta make that happen. So it does inform a little bit about how you're gonna play defense. It does change some of those things. Those are all things you have to think about as you're calling your plays. You, you gotta realize, okay, if I call this, what can he do to beat me? You have to know that in your head um, before you before you step on the field. I think it's super, super important. So here, got to watch tight end, in route. See, and that's where we want him to go. We want him to go right there. That's fine, because look at the clock. Tick, 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 right? It's going to start ticking. Now you notice here um, that he's going to shift the gun doubles. So I wisely need to get out of that base alignment defense. Gun doubles is not something you want to baseline against, in my opinion. Little, little RPO, good run call. Good run call right there. Gonna throw a vert hook on the field. Have a little balance here with your defense. We didn't get our deep path off. We really needed to do that right there. That's fine. He's going to, and I'm okay with that. I will live and I will let him have that every single time. It, it, it is such, until we get down, until we really get down in the red zone, um, that's going to be, that's going to be available for him. Like that's going to be there. And you'll see, because he's got to score seven. He's got to score seven to tie. I feel pretty good about my red zone defense right now. So if he, you know, if he isn't able to score in the red zone, like the game's over pretty much. So, you know, it's all about that. Here a little motion and he throws right into me. I hit triangle, I don't know why my guy didn't catch the ball, but throws right into me. And he's running the Arizona playbook. I actually know this playbook really, really well. I ran this at the beginning of the year. Um, it's a really good book. Little slip screen, good tackle. That brings up a fourth down situation. You know, now we're in a good situation here, fourth and four. And honestly, like it's not the ball game. He's still going to be in. Uh, you know, if he gets a stop, right, he's in a good spot. But we feel really good if we can get the stop right here. So he's coming out in gun cluster. Uh, what we're going to do? We haven't sent pressure all game long. Uh, we're going to send some heat here, and we're kind of anticipating base, honestly. There we go. So good pressure, good defense. We haven't sent it all game. I will literally probably blitz maybe, maybe twice a game. Um, that's just kind of my general way I like to play this year. I think it's the best way to play this year. 
Um, and so as you see right there, we're able to do a good job and get a stop. So now this allows me to go to a little bit more ball control, a uh, little bit more of a ball control style of offense. So you'll see, I'm gonna use this motioned out flat. Um, and you see, if they blitz, easy read, just easy. And I know it's a yard, but I, I, I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> like I am so good with that yard. So right here you see, I'm gonna sub in Woods and then I'm gonna sub in uh, Calvin and I'm gonna sub in, uh, um, and this will be fine. I'm gonna sub in uh, Henry here. So I got a better back. And then basically, if we've, I feel like if I get three points here, the game's over. Like if I can take some clock and just get three, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that because that's going to make it a two possession game. So, you know, we're just going to go right down easy. Uh, now third and six, a little bit more of a passing situation. Uh, we're going to try to set ourselves up a little bit for a potential fourth down conversion. I don't, I'm not a very good kicker. Um, just not a good special teams kicker. So I don't feel too confident if I have to kick the ball. So we're not gonna try to put ourselves in a position where we're gonna have to do that. Um, what I like to do though, is I like to basically block seven and just look and peek and see if he's playing discipline. He's not, we're able to hit this corner. That corner is such a good route. It's such a hard route to stop. And in my eyes, we just won the ball game. Like in my eyes, the game's over um, as long as I execute my clock management because even if he stops us, even if he stops us, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot here because we're gonna be able to take as much clock. So we're gonna literally, we're gonna be snapping the ball at one. We're gonna maybe do some fake hot routes and things like that just to kind of keep him off guard. But you're gonna see, we're probably not gonna put the ball in the air again this game. And just easy running. The base is such a hard run to stop. Like it, it's just, it just is, it's just a hard run to stop. So we can easily kind of sit in this. The other thing we can do is we can kind of do the same thing we wanted, like from trips tight in, we can actually do the same thing. So if we want to, we can put Woods out here and then on that far outside, because we normally block that guy anyway, we can put uh, Reggie Bush, who's a, a decent receiver, right? But we could come out in this RPO zone. So we have this RPO if he's giving us a look for it. If not, then we can just audible to quick base, just like this, easy audible. Um, but we're in the personnel grouping to be able to, to go down to trips or to uh, eye tight. So you see right here, almost intentionally didn't get the first down so that now I'm in a third and inches position. You see here, and he's starting to kind of see that I'm gonna basically clock him out uh, and he's gonna go ahead and concede. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. And if you wanna get the exact offense and defense that I ran in this video, you can get them in the description.